When I was just a young warthog taking my first life-snaring steps into Azeroth, the fictional planet of the World of Warcraft, I needed a program to be able to speak with my friends as we played together. There were a few options at the time, uh, Vent and TeamSpeak, and we even used Google Hangouts for a time. That's right. Google frickin' plus. It was not an especially pleasant experience. The audio quality was terrible. Many of the solutions cost money, which we didn't have as poor college students, and the interfaces were often clunky and outdated. But lo, on the horizon rose a mighty warrior coming to save us all from subpar online voice chat. Discord, an app originally built specifically for PC gamers to voice chat and text chat each other while gaming, has developed into an incredibly powerful, all-encompassing social media platform that feels entirely purpose-built for community and for subculture. Over the past couple years, Discord has worked hard to distance itself from a purely gaming platform and implemented a ton of features features that I believe make it the best equipped online social media platform for church discipleship and fellowship. Facebook, Instagram, and even Twitter can't hold a candle to the environments and tools that Discords gives its users to grow closer with one another. If your church or ministry is honestly interested in creating an online space where congregants can meet together online, pray for each other, worship together, even just laugh together, I believe that Discord is something you should be checking out. Let's talk about why. Welcome to Black Bar. Thanks so much for the Patreons who helped make this video possible. If you wanna learn how to support the channel, check out the link in the description below. Hi, I'm Caleb, and today we're gonna to talk about five reasons I believe your church could benefit from a Discord server. Huge shout out first to our Patreons, certified pros, and other members of our Black Bar community that joined us a few weeks ago to brainstorm ways that Discord could be used for ministry. That conversation is available now on our podcast, which is available down below. Number one, the power of synchronous conversation. In the online space, or really any space, we can break communication into two different types of categories. I think YouTube and Twitch are great examples of each category. When we as Black Bar post a YouTube video like the one you're watching, the development and production of that video and the things that we're communicating in that video are done entirely without the feedback of the people that will watch it. It's not usually until we post the finished video that we're essentially handing over the talking stick to our community who then have the opportunity to communicate back with us. It's the same way most non-face-to-face -face conversations have occurred for thousands of years. You write a letter, you wait, you get a new letter back, you write another one, and repeat. This is what we call asynchronous communication. Essentially, communication that doesn't happen at the same time. Alternatively, if we are live streaming on Twitch, we'll say, both we and our audience are essentially talking at the same time. We can go back and forth as if we were in a face-to-face -face conversation, much faster paced, and honestly, much more human conversation. This is synchronous communication, communication that happens at the same time. The vast majority of online social media platforms today are primarily asynchronous platforms. Outside of private messages or DMs, usually the original poster puts up a picture or a video or a thought and its users then comment or interact with that post over the next few hours or days. There are certainly some exceptions and I've seen comments go back and forth very quickly over the course of a minute. But if you're trying to have that kind of conversation, it almost always ends up in DMs eventually. Discord, alternatively, is primarily a synchronous social media platform. Though it can make announcements, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, the majority of the communication happening on Discord is happening real time between members of the community. Whether they're in a voice chat room with their friends, which is essentially like a 21st century version of a party line, if you're old enough to remember those, or talking back and forth in text chat, communication is fast and fluid. As a byproduct of this type of communication, people are far more likely to act like actual human beings instead of perfectly crafting their sentences and responses. In my experience, this leads to a much more relaxed, honest, and human conversation than the often calculated, crafted personalities that we see on other social media platforms. Live conversation allows people to be vulnerable, developing closer relationships with the people around them, and from a ministry perspective, promoting deeper spiritual relationships with other people in the church. Now, 
If you have any experience leading an online community like this, or even any community for that matter, you probably have a couple alarm bells going off in your head. You don't want just anybody popping into your community and just spewing whatever the heck they want. It's the same reason people fled from platforms like Zoom, and it's the same reason we set privacy standards on our social media platform. Fortunately, Discord servers are as secure as you want them to be. Typically, Discord servers are not going to be an excellent way to reach out to new people in your community. No one is stumbling upon a Discord server. You have to be invited. Now, by default, any member of your community can invite someone to your private Discord server. If you want to keep it secure, though, there are ways to set permissions so that only pastors or administrators are even able to send invite links. Though, even if you do want to keep the door open to potential visitors, you can set up your own Discord server with roles and permissions so that even if someone does come in with ill intent, the furthest they would be able to get in is your proverbial lobby. You can essentially lock the doors to the other rooms where the youth meet and the women meet and the men meet or even the young marrieds meet, simultaneously giving the keys to those rooms to trusted congregants that are in any of those categories. Speaking of categories, your church's Discord server doesn't have to be set up like a giant chat room that anybody in your congregation can just spit into. Honestly, that sounds like a headache and a half. Instead, you can break up your Discord server into individual channels and categories for different groups of people. You can have a chat room specifically for your youth to be able to communicate with each other throughout the week. You could have a channel specifically for your men's ministry or your women's ministry. You can even have multiple channels within a single ministry for different types of conversation like prayer requests or general conversation or Bible studies or whatever. What's best is that you can make those rooms visible to only members of those ministries. The guys aren't going to be able to get in and see what the women are talking about in the women's ministry chat. And same goes for potential strangers and your youth chat. This allows members of your church to connect with ministries throughout the week in a safe, secure way and allow themselves to be honest with other people that are in the same chapter of life that they are in. The amazing thing is that you don't even really need to limit it to traditional ministry categories. You can set up channels for each small group to connect throughout the week. No more Zoom. You could even break up your youth channels and conversations based on interests. So youth are free to talk throughout the week about sports or gaming or YouTube or theology or whatever. Discord allows for up to 500 channels for a single server. So feel free to get creative in how you break up and categorize your online campus. Number four, voice chat and streaming. What if I told you it was absolutely possible for all of your online congregation to also watch your Sunday morning live stream together and chat back and forth while it's happening all on Discord because it's totally possible. Those 21st century party lines I was talking about earlier, they can do video now. Unlimited, high definition video streaming for as long as you want. Take that, Zoom. But similar to Zoom, you could restrict chatting and streaming to a channel so that people can join, watch the live stream that your church is putting in the chat, type back and forth with each other just like they do on a typical Sunday on Facebook and other platforms, all without ever leaving the same application that they communicate with their church throughout the week. That's not even everything though. Small groups looking to get together throughout the week can use these private voice chats to connect the same way they use Zoom in the past. No time limits, no sharing dumb invite links that are always way too long for some reason. It just pops up as a notification and they join it on their device as easy as they would answering a phone call. It's even totally possible with a little bit of tech savviness to set up small programmable bots that you can download off the internet for free to play and stream music in these voice chats live. Theoretically, you could have your own personalized church worship radio station that any congregation member can jump in and listen to throughout the week, worshiping together, chatting together, even suggesting upcoming songs. That's powerful, guys. That's not the kind of thing you can do on Facebook or on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Number five, announcements. All right, here's the kicker for my marketing friends. Let's say you set up your Discord server into some basic ministry categories. Men's, women's, youth, young adults, etc. Perhaps there's an upcoming men's ministry event that you wanna let your guys know about. 
using the Discord platform, you can send a push notification to anyone in your Discord server that has permissions with the men's channels. Emergency announcement, push notification. Child acting up in nursery, PM the mom on Discord. Need permission slips for an upcoming youth trip, set up a channel specifically for parents and send notification to their phones with a link to fill it out. Nobody gets notifications for ministries that they're not involved with and the only pings that you get are from the things that you actually care about. This isn't like reading through a church bulletin full of information and only 20% of it applies to you. Everything that you see on the platform is especially tailored to the interests and ministries that you belong to. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that Discord is an incredibly intuitive, easy thing to set up. Now, for congregation members, it's just as easy as making any other social media account. But from an administrative perspective though, it's gonna take someone with a little bit of tech savvy to get it all working. That being said, Black Bar specifically is wholeheartedly dedicated to making Discord a platform that churches can thrive on. And we're in the process of developing some tools that we believe can make the process easier and more effective. Stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you're looking for help setting up your own server or would like to get an idea of what the program feels like, Black Bar has its own Discord server for our community. Now, we've broken ours up into channels dedicated for tech, media, and marketing subjects since that's the mode of our ministry, but it should give you an idea of how the platform works. Also, we'll be creating a new channel specifically for Discord-related questions, and several of our certified pros have extensive experience setting up and administrating these types of servers. Now, it kind of sounds like I'm trying to sell you something on this. I'm not. Our Discord server is free, our certified pros are volunteers, and we all truly, honestly want to serve the global church the best way we can. And we hope to see you over there. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Black Bar. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the Black Bar podcast released every single week where we go more into depth into the topics we talk about in these videos. In addition, if you would like to join the Black Bar volunteer team and help make content or help other struggling churches on our Discord, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.